we are going to make cheater quilts. What is a cheater quilt, you ask? A cheater quilt contains a whole piece of fabric as the top that doesn't have to be pieced. You don't have to sew together these little tiny squares. The top panel already has lines or squares that look like a quilt but doesn't have to be pieced together. All you have to add to your fabric panel is batting and backing. Quilt the top, add your binding, and you're done. To get started making the cheater quilt top, you are going to need a cheater quilt top. So you are going to need a panel of fabric that has squares like this, or it can be lines, grids, anything that you can quilt a straight line on top of it will be fine. So on top of having your fabric panel, you're also going to be needing batting. I like the crimp size batting because we are going to be making a 36 by 36 baby quilt top. You of course can make it bigger, but today that's what we're gonna be making. So I usually get the crib size batting. You will also need backing for the fabric. So our quilt top is 36 by 36. And for the backing, we are going to be doing uh, 40 inches by 40 inches. So it has a little extra room on each side to make sure that the quilting doesn't eat up too much of the fabric and there's still enough of the backing. You will also need half of a yard for the quilt binding. I love making the cheetah quilt top because it's a super fast project and it's a great way to kind of get started in quilting without actually having to cut the fabric to make a quilt. So for the beginning steps, we are going to be making what is called a fabric sandwich. We are going to lay down the backing followed by the batting, followed on top by the fabric panel. And all three of those will make what is called a quilt sandwich. And then we are going to baste those together. Basting can be done one of three ways. The first way is to use quilting safety pins. The second way is to use a basting spray where you simply spray onto the layer before you add the next layer. And the third way is to glue baste and that involves glue and an iron, but since we are starting at the beginning, we are going to be using quilting safety pins because I think that is the cheapest and easiest way to get started. With these quilting safety pins, you are going to want to be sure to get the ones that have a little curve in them, and that will make it easier for you to close the pins as you're putting them through the quilt. So the first part of this process is going to be making the quilt sandwich. So you are going to lay out your fabric bottom and you're going to place it wrong side up. Then we are going to take the quilt batting and we are going to lay it on top. You're just going to smooth out the batting as you go. Smooth out the wrinkles as best as you can. It's okay. If there are wrinkles, you will just push them out to the side. So at the end, there are not any wrinkles. And if you have to turn it over to help get rid of wrinkles, that's fine. You can turn it over, just give it a little lift. Now we are going to add our fabric panel. So you're going to do the same thing. You're gonna lay it on top. I'm going to check to make sure that these are lined up. Really what I want is I want the fabric bottom to extend a little bit. You're going to want to make sure that the batting and the backing stick out a little bit from the back of the quilt because as we sew our lines, it's going to gather the fabric. And when it gathers the fabric, sometimes it tends to eat it up. And so we just want to make sure that there's a little bit extra of the backing and of the batting so that they don't slip underneath the quilt when we sew it. And you're just gonna smooth it out the same as you did the other one. Check the back one more time to make sure that there are no wrinkles in the fabric. Now, we are going to take our safety pins and we are going to baste the quilt by pinning it in place. I generally like to pin every five to six inches. These squares run about six inches, so I'm going to pin in the middle of every square. 
and I'm going to start at the top. This is one of the longer parts of the process. Usually during this part, I like to put on a good podcast or a show on Netflix and just listen to it as I get in the zone. Now that we have finished basting our quilt top, we are going to do some straight line quilting. Straight line quilting is my favorite beginner quilting method. It makes a really nice clean finish and it's super easy and goes by super quick. To start straight line quilting, I really like to start in the middle and I always start on one side and I continue going down that side the entire time that I'm quilting. So if I start at the top, I will quilt all the way down to the bottom, cut the thread, and then I will start back up at the top again. If you go down one way and you come back up the other way, it kind of gives a little like torque or like twist to the quilt top and it kind of bunches up a little bit and I just don't really like how it looks. So I always try to keep quilting the way that I started. And a nifty little trick for quilting any quilt top, even if it's a smaller size, like a baby size, is typically sewing machines don't have a lot of space under what is known as the throat or the area between the sewing needle and the solid side. So what I like to do is I like to just roll up, roll up the quilt top, and then this will fit nice and neat underneath the throat of your sewing machine and make it a lot easier to quilt as you're going without having the fabric weighing down and getting in the way as you're trying to quilt the quilt top. If you think that quilting might be something that you are going to do more in the future, you might invest in a really cheap pair of these quilting gloves. I want to say they're like $3.99, $4.99, um, but they have these little um, plastic dots on the bottom and they just help push the fabric along as you're quilting. Sometimes the weight of the quilt makes it harder for the fabric to feed or for the whole quilt to feed under and it feels like it's pulling back against the sewing machine and so you kind of feel like you have to push it. So I really find that these gloves just help me feed the quilt a little bit more evenly. And actually, honestly, I think that these are almost like garden gloves. So if you have a pair of garden gloves laying around, those would probably work just as easily. We are going to start in the middle on the top side and follow the straight line all the way down. I like to use a two and a half to three inch stitch for quilting straight lines on my quilt top. And each time I am going to roll up my quilt just a little bit more to be able to feed it through the sewing machine a little bit easier. Now we're gonna be cutting our quilt binding. You are going to want to make sure to starch and to press the fabric before cutting. This is an important step to make sure that all of the wrinkles are out so when you cut, it is a nice, clean, straight line. To start with, we are going to cut a nice, clean edge and then we'll turn the fabric around and cut two and a half inch strips. You are going to need four two and a half inch strips the two and a half inch strips are going to be the width of the fabric and what that means is that when you have the selvage, it is the entire width of the fabric. And then you fold the fabric over in half, selvage to selvage, and then we are going to be cutting from there. Nice, clean, straight edges are really important in quilting. So to start off with, we are going to line up the bottom fold and then we are going to cut the right side to be a nice and clean straight edge that we can work with. Once you have this nice clean straight edge we are going to turn around the cutting mat 
and we can use the numbers and the guides on the ruler instead of the cutting mat because sometimes these tend to be off a little bit to cut our fabric. So we are going to do two and a half inches. So you're gonna line up your ruler at the two and a half inch mark. You're gonna to want to make sure that the top is straight along there and that the line lines all the way up and then you are going to cut. And that will make your first two and a half inch strip. And we are going to cut three more of these. There is a saying in quilting, it is measure twice, cut once. Now that we are all done cutting our strips, we are going to be connecting these strips together. To combine these strips, there's two tools that I really like a lot. I like to have a square ruler that has a nice diagonal line. Although if what you have is a long quilting ruler, as long as it has a diagonal line going 45 degrees, that is fine. Also, I like to have a Frixon pen. These are really helpful for uh, marking the fabric. You will also need some pins for this. So I like to start out by doing it the same way each and every time. I lay out my first fabric strip horizontally, and then I take my second fabric strip and I lay it vertically. It's okay if it has the selvage, you don't need to worry about taking that off, but what you need, do need to do is make sure that the selvages are not in the, the square. If you make a square with both of the strips combined, you wanna make sure that the selvages are not within the square. The next step is going to be to take my ruler, either your square ruler or your long ruler, and I'm gonna take this um, diagonal line and I line it up so it is parallel with the vertical strip. And then I take the edge of the ruler and I make sure that it is lined up diagonally going from the top right of the strip down to the bottom left of the vertical strip and the same with the horizontal strip. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my pen and I'm going to mark a line. So we will have a diagonal line going from the top right down to the bottom left. Then you're going to take your pins and I start in the middle, I pin one in the middle, I pin one on the top right, and I pin one on the bottom left. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to sew down from the top right down to the bottom left on a diagonal line and we are going to repeat this entire process for all of our strips. So the easiest way to do this is to just take this strip and you are going to flip it upside down or right side up and you're going to make this your horizontal strip. And then you're going to take your next vertical strip and you are going to line it up again, making sure the selvage, even though you can't see the white, this is still a selvage edge, and you are going to make the diagonal marking again and pin it in place. And then we're gonna flip this one to be a horizontal strip. And we're going to take our last vertical strip and place it on top. You're gonna to want to be sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end of sewing the diagonal lines of the quilt binding. And I also like to sew at a little smaller stitch. I sew at a two millimeter stitch. And I think this just helps keep the stitches in place with the quilt binding. Remember to remove the pins as you sew. We'll move on to the next one and we will just sew all of these together at one time. Now that we have sewn the diagonal of the quilt binding, we are going to take our quilt ruler and rotary blade cutter and cut along the diagonal. You are going to place the edge of the ruler a quarter of an inch away from the diagonal line a lot of times there is a line on the ruler and so you can simply place that line on the ruler and then the edge will be a quarter of an inch away from that line. Cut down along the side of the diagonal line. When you're done, you will have these little edges called dog ears and you're going to want to give those a little snip. When you're done, your binding will line up just like that. 
we are going to finish cutting the rest of the fabric off of the diagonal lines. Next, we are going to press it. You're going to want to open it with your fingers, give it a little finger press, and then gently press in place with your iron. Next, we are going to take our quilt binding and we are going to fold it in half horizontally so the raw edges meet and then we are going to press and we are going to do this all the way down through all of the quilt binding. To attach the quilt binding, you will need either pins or clips. You are going to take your quilt binding and place the raw edge along the raw edge of the quilt. I like to start in the middle of the quilt and you are going to either pin or clip in place. When you get to the edge or the bottom of the piece that you are clipping in place, you are going to make a mitered corner. And to do that, you are going to place your finger along the edge of the quilt and you are going to fold the quilt binding upwards. So you are making a diagonal fold. Once you have folded it upward, put your finger there to hold it in place and you are going to fold it back downward. There will be a little triangle there. And you are going to place that flat down, the triangle, place it flat down on the side that you've just pinned and you can either pin it or clip it in place. And then continue clipping along the side of the quilt. The reason why we do this is so when we flip this over after it's sewn to finish the quilt binding, we have the room, the fabric allowance that we need to make that corner. And this is called a mitered corner. Now you are going to finish clipping the rest of the quilt. When you get to the end, there the fabric will be overlapping and that's okay. And um, today we're actually gonna make what I call kind of the shortcut method of finishing the quilt. So just make sure you have about three to four inches overlapping and then you can trim it. I'm going to fold over the raw edge, creating a little tuck then you are going to take the other quilt binding and tuck it into the outside quilt binding and fold it over. It creates a nice finished edge that will not fray when you wash it. And then you're simply just going to pin that in place. Then you are going to sew around the perimeter of the quilt binding using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. When we get to the mitered corners, we are gonna stop and I will show you how to sew those when we get to those. For this, you will need a quarter of an inch presser foot. They come in several different shapes and sizes. Generally, the sewing machine that you buy will come with one, but if not, you can order them on Amazon. And they really help to get an accurate one quarter of an inch seam allowance. You're going to want to backstitch to start. When you get to the corner, a quarter of an inch before the raw edge, you are going to stop with the needle down you are going to pivot to the diagonal corner and then you are going to sew down to the edge. Once you have sewn the diagonal corner, you are going to fold the fabric upward, place your finger there to hold and then fold downward so it is flush, the folded edge is flush with the raw edge. And then clip or pin in place. Now we are going to start a quarter of an inch away from the top edge to accommodate the fold. And sew down the remainder of the side until we reach the mitered corner. Now that we have finished sewing on the front of the quilt binding, we are going to be turning it, folding it to the other side, and sewing it onto the back. There are two ways to do it. 
You can either sew it by machine or you can sew it by hand. I prefer to machine stitch my quilt binding. And now I'm gonna show you how to fold these mitered corners. To make the mitered corner, you are gonna fold over the fabric near the corner of the quilt binding and pin it in place. Once you have done that, you're gonna have this nice little angled corner. It's gonna be like a little triangle. And you're gonna to wanna to place your finger to hold it in place. And then you're gonna fold the perpendicular side of the quilt binding over. And then you're gonna to wanna to pin that in place or clip that in place. And what this is gonna do is just form this really nice angled mitered corner. And then when you sew the mitered corner, you simply sew along the edge. And as you are sewing, it will catch it right there and you will keep on sewing. To machine quilt your binding, you will sew right along in the little ditch of the panel and the quilt binding all along there. And it will catch the back of the quilt binding right there. So as it goes along, it will just simply catch all of that. And you're gonna to wanna to continue clipping your quilt binding. Now we are going to simply sew in the ditch all the way around the top of the quilt.